Hey class, this is a quick video going over homework problem 5 from the section 12.1 homework and it's labeled as 12.1.17. So as I read through the problem, I see there are 1600 students in these in this physics course and they're in one of four groups, 400 in each group. And for the first half of the semester, the whole class averaged 76% attendance. The four groups averaged Group one had 77%, so did group two, but group three and group four had 75% attendance. Okay, the first question asks, the number of students who attended in the first group was, I'm gonna multiply 400 by its percent, 77%, and 400 times 0.77 is 308. For group two, that's the same. For group three, 400 times 75%, that's 300 and the same for group four. Check my answer, fantastic. All right, let's continue to the next part of the problem. What are the hypotheses? The null hypothesis is that the average attendance is going to be the same for each of the four groups. Remember, the null hypothesis is always a statement about equality or no change. So going to go with option A here. The attendance is the same for uh, each group and the alternative is that the average attendance is different than the class. Excellent. Now for the p-value and here's where we have to be careful. Um, if we open up StatCrunch here, all it's going to copy over are the percent, but what we need are the raw data. So in VERA1, I'm going to type the observed frequencies, which are 308, 308, 300, and 300. Now we're going to, in the second column, type what we expected to happen. And that is based on the idea that, let's see, where is it? For the first half of the semester, the attendance for the whole class averaged 76%. So if it was supposed to be 70, we would expect 76% from each group. 400 times 0.76 is 304. So that goes in the expected column. And I always think it's a good idea to label these columns to just call this E for expected and the first one O for observed. So in a moment when I go to compute the test statistic, I'll have the right columns in the right place. All right, for the p-value, stat, goodness of fit, chi-square test. The observed are in column O and the expected are in column E, although I could have taken the option of all cells are in equal proportion. Click Compute, and there's my p-value, 0.9759. So let me go back. And type that in for the p-value. There's a good lesson. Always read the directions. I was supposed to do that to three decimal places. I typed four. 0.976 is the p-value. Okay. Uh, is there a significant difference among the groups? Uh, we, at a p-value of 0.976, we are not able to reject the null hypothesis. So I'm looking at, um, if I can't reject the null hypothesis, then I can't conclude that there's a difference between the groups and the average. So the correct answer here is um, C. No, the null hypothesis should not be rejected because the p-value of the test is greater than alpha, the level of significance. Let's take a look at a little more. For the second half of the semester, the groups were rotated so that group one moved to the back of the class 
and group four moved to the front. Also groups two and three switched. The attendance for the second half of the semester averaged 70 percent. The data show the attendance records for the original groups, how many students in each group attended on average. So again, each group started with 400 people and we're going to multiply it by those percentages. 400 times 77% for group one, that's 308. 400 times 75% for group two, that's 300. For group three, 400 times 69% is Uh, 276 and for group 4 400 times 59% is 236 check that answer good job now it's time for the computation of the p-value for this scenario and so I'm going to go back to stack crunch and I need to change these observed frequencies uh, the first one is still 308. The second one has dropped to 300. The third one is 276. And the fourth one was 236. Now for the expected frequencies, we were told that uh, the attendance for the second half of the semester averaged 70%. So I'm going to take the 400 in each group and multiply it by 70%. That's 280. So I'll change each expected frequency to 280. And I can rerun the same test. Stat, goodness of fit, chi-square test. The observed are in column O, expected in column E, compute. The p-value is 0 0.0107, but I've learned from last time, I only need three decimal places. That's 0.011 rounded to three places. Well done. I think the there are a couple of places where you can go wrong here uh, besides rounding. And the most likely is if you just grab the table from Stack Crunch, all it would copy over are these percentages, but we need to know the actual frequencies, not those percentages work with these numbers instead and so you're going to have to open a new stack crunch window and type those is there a significant difference in attendance pattern so 0 0.011 is not below 0 0.01 therefore the answer is no because the p-value of the test is greater than the level of significance excellent eventually let's see what else we have in this problem uh, at the end of the semester the proportion of students in the top 20% of the class was determined. In group one, 28% were in there. In group two, um, 22%. Group three was 19, and group four was 11. And how many students would we expect in the top 20% if seat location plays no role in grades? In other words, we'd expect 20% from each group to be in the top 20. So 400 times 20%. That is 80 for each group that we would expect to be in the top 20%. Now the next part, um, we have to figure out the null hypothesis. The number of students in the top 20% would be the same amongst the groups, and then it would not be the same. So that's option C. And we need a p-value. So Coming back to Stack Crunch, I know that the expected frequency for each group is 80. But what we haven't figured out yet is the observed frequency for each group. And here's where we go back to those percentages laid out in Part C. 28% from Group 1 were in the top 20%. So I'm going to multiply 400 by 28%. That is 112. In group 2, 22% were in that top 20%. 400 times 22%, that is 88. Group 3, 19%. 400 times 0.19 is 76. And group 4, 
400 times 11% is 44. Now I can rerun this test one last time. Stat, goodness of fit, chi-square. Observed is an observed. Expected is an E for expected. Compute. The p-value is extremely small, less than 0 0.0001. So to three decimal places, that is 0, 0.000 or just zero. Check the answer. Excellent. And then finally, is there a significant difference? Yes, the p-value should be rejected. Be yes, the null hypothesis should be rejected because the p-value is lower than the level of significance. Okay, one last thing in StockCrunch before I let you go. If I come back to Options and Edit, instead of typing those four 80s, I could have used all cells in equal proportion and click Compute and I get the same exact results.